Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Welcome back to our ongoing Armory Game Engine tutorial series. Today we're going to get into the basics of scripting. That's why it's called Scripting Basics. So we're going to look at the two ways you can script in the Armory Game Engine. Uh, the first one being hacks-based scripts attached as traits, and the second one being node-based scripts created directly inside of Blender. So without further ado, let's jump in. I want to remind you, uh, there is an ongoing tutorial series. It's actually a bit ahead of us right now, and we're going to be covering this chapter right here. This link to the series and to this particular tutorial will be down below. And then once this video is authored, it will be embedded at the bottom of the tutorial. So you can pick your poison where you want to work if you prefer text or video. All right, without further ado, let's fire up Blender. Now, I assume you've watched the prior tutorials before continuing on, so I'm going to build on the same knowledge, but I will give you a quick reminder. First, before we can start programming, we need to do a couple of things. We need to go here and switch to cycles mode. We need to save our project at least once so that the blend file has been created and so that the right directories can be made. And we need to do a build. So once we've done all of that, you can continue on. If you don't do this build process uh, and you haven't saved and you haven't switched to Cycles Renderer, the next step will not work. All right, so let's do it thing. It should be done. We should be good to go. Now let's head on over to right here, this tab, and we're going to attach a trait. Now a trait is ultimately the Lego of logic when it comes to armory games. This is the building block for everything. This is where your game loop or the game engine game loop interacts with your game. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to create a trait. All right. My mouse is being finicky. So scroll on down with something selected. So I'm using the default scene and I have the cube currently selected. You can see right here it is selected. If you don't currently have the cube, you're not using the default scene, make sure you create some kind of an object. I don't even care what kind, um, but make something and attach this trait to it. So with whatever object you're gonna attach the trait to selected, head on down here and locate the armory traits category. That's what you're looking for right here. And then what you want to do is click this plus right here, and this will create a new trait. And now we can pick the type of trait we want to work with. And we're dealing with hacks in this particular case, and we want to now create a new script. So click new script, and you can name it right here. So it's my hacks trait. So if this trait was um, an object mover, you call it object mover or object rotator or whatever, that's what the trait's name is ultimately going to be. Click it OK and you will see it is named and created right there. And now we can actually go ahead and work on or edit our trait. Now we're not going to get into much detail on programming in this particular video. This is more of an introduction to the options available, not how you actually code. But don't worry, as we get into individual topics that rely on code, I will go into more depth of how you actually work with Armory and the underlying call uh, technologies as well as the Iron Framework. So. What we want to do now is click edit script. This will fire up the integrated code studio that you can see right here. And here is a very, very simple script. I'm going to hit control plus a couple times once this is loaded so you can see what I'm dealing with here. This is a trait. Now, as I mentioned to you earlier, a trait is basically how your um, objects in the world interact back with the Armory game engine. Now, Armory is going to periodically call your trait over times or different times. And you see here, you've got a bunch of commented out functions. We have notify on init, and this is a function that is basically going to be called um, when your trait is first initialized, only once, mind you. Uh, this one is going to be called on update. And this means every single time the, the game engine goes through its loop, uh, it will call this trait. Now, every game engine has some kind of a game loop somewhere. And this is where it kind of goes through and goes, okay, is there any input? What's happened with the physics? Have anything updated? Okay, what about the user? Um, and it does that over and over and over again until your game exits. Well, this function is basically called every single time the game goes through that loop. So this is where you would, well, predictably enough, update your action. So if you wanted to move your guy, you could do it right here in the update. And then finally, we have another callback here for uh, removing said trait. So when the trait is is removed from the world somehow, that will be called. This is like the C++. You can think of this like the, it's not really technically the constructor because this is, but this is called at the end like a destructor. This is called at the beginning um, like a constructor if you're from a C background, uh, although I'm technically wrong in that definition. So all we're going to do today actually is a simple, a simple extremely simple hello world. Um, so you just come on up here. Default built-in function is called trace and you can just spit out whatever text you want. So we'll do hello world, like so. So this is our very first hacks program ever. Now the cool thing is, you can actually run your application from directly in Code Studio. So watch this, I'm gonna hit F5. 
And it's going to run it. You'll see it's doing its thing down here. Dun, dun, dun. And now it's done. Our application should appear any second now. And there it is. So there you can see our running application. This is built off of, this is quite obviously the 3D scene that we've constructed over here. Uh, and if you go down to the debug console, our trait was not called. Okay, the law of demoing came into effect. I'm not entirely certain what happened there. I closed down Code Studio, I started it back up, and then I ran it. So I'll, I'll show you the run. Uh, but basically, once I closed it back down and ran it again, it ran exactly as expected. Our demo loads up right here our debug console over here, and there you see hello world as we printed. So I'm not sure what the little glitch was there, but to be honest, there are some issues with the console as we will see in a second as we move on to node programming. So that's the gist of hacks development. Again, we're gonna get into a whole lot more detail about what the actual code you type is, but I want you to understand how the lifestyle works and how scripts are attached to game objects in the actual world. And later on, we'll look at um, iron and the way that we can integrate back to the blender and in between the two. Don't worry, we're going to get into a lot more depth. I just don't want to overwhelm you in this particular video or make this video too, too long. All right, so that is it for now. But before we move away from hacks completely, I want to show you one other option you've got. So while we're here in the armory traits, so we see here we have a hacks trait with the uh, my hacks trait attached to it. But you notice over here, we also have bundled. Bundled is actually kind of cool because this is a bunch of built-in um, scripts that are available to you. So I can actually, if we go back here, we can get rid of this guy completely. Instead, we can go to Bundled. And you see where I go to Class here? We have actually can select from a bunch of built-in traits that have been defined for us. And you see there's all kinds of different things. Now, some of these assume a certain feature. So, example, if you attach a first-person controller or a follow camera, they're going to expect a camera on the back end. But you've got things down here such as... Uh, let's see, let's keep going. Uh, rotator, simple object rotate, simple rotate object, for example. So we're going to attach that trait to our object instead. You see here, there's a single parameter for it. Um, so you can, it's the speed right there. And we can go ahead and edit this script as well. Again, it's built in, but the code is all available to us. So you can check out those built in scripts to see the basics of how hack scripting can work. And then we'll head on back over here. We'll see that we have the rotator attached. I'll press F5 to run this particular code. I think it's using. T and Y for the various different axes. Yeah, so T, oh no, R and T, F and G, V and B. So if you want to get playing with the hatch scripts for now, do take a look at what these bundled scripts are and you'll see that there's a bunch of basic scripts already built in there that you can easily learn from. All right, so that is hacks programming. Um, now we're going to move on instead to using node-based programming. So with this guy selected again, uh, I'm going to actually disconnect this script. No traits attached to him, so I'll actually get rid of it completely. So there's no traits on this guy, and we're going to go ahead and open up the node editor. We're going to program this guy using nodes instead. So let's bring this guy up and switch this over to node editor. And now we want to go click this guy right here, switch over to logic node tree. And now we can go ahead and create a node tree that will control what our particular guy right here does. Um, so for example, if we wanted to move him ever so slightly, we could. So we basically we'll go here, we'll click once to create a new tree, and then click again to rename it. We'll call it my node tree. Obviously call it whatever the heck you want, like so. And then over here, once that node tree is actually created, once again, under the properties, armory traits, add a new trait, and then you'll see you have nodes as an option here as well. Click this one, select my node tree, and now you've wired this guy up to be controlled by your node tree that you're gonna create over here. Now this guy works more like a flow chart of um, actions. So you basically, if you've worked with blueprints or any other visual scripting language, you've got an idea how this works. Basically you have a flow of activities that happen and they all kind of connect the inputs and outputs to create scripts. So let's actually show you that in action. So we can go ahead right here to, um, to add, and then what you're probably going to want to do every time is have some kind of an event. Now, events are things that happen. Uh, so you see here, they've got on, uh, on event, on init, timer, update, and volume trigger. Now, most of those are those same things that we saw in the hacks callback, those various different things in the lifecycle. So, for example, on update is called every single frame. 
So we click here and drop it in. Now we can use the uh, scroll wheel to zoom in and the middle mouse button to pan around. So you'll see this, since this is an input or an event node, uh, it has nothing on the left-hand side, but it has this one pin on the right-hand side, and that's the output. These red pins are basically uh, like verbs or actions that are occurring. And now we can connect this to other nodes and make it do stuff. So let's look at one of the simplest examples we could do. Um, we're going to do an action, and we're going to translate on local axis. Like so, so you see we have this red pin. So that is meaning it will flow from here to here now that that pin is connected. Literally just drag and drop between the two to create a pin. To get rid of a pin, you delete it. So you can go here, and then we could keep the chain going. But that's all we're going to do in this particular example. So now we're going to just hook up what action to hook on. So we could bring this in as a parameter um, that we got via you know any of these other nodes on this thing. And don't worry, we're going to dump into the nodes with a whole lot more detail in the future as well. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to use the built-in value. So here I'm going to say, give me the selected. So you see now the cube is the picked object. So this, on update, we're going to translate the cube. And then finally, I'm going to pick which direction. So uh, three is to the right, one is forward, uh, two is up, three is right. And then here's the speed to update by. So 0 0.01. So we're going to move very, very slow. If we wanted to go in the opposite direction, we could hit that one. And I'm actually going to touch on this actual node a little bit in a future example. So don't worry about the details on that quite yet. So that is a, about as simple of a graph as you could create. Go ahead and run your guy. Since remember to hook it up over here, of course. But once it's hooked up and you run your code, there you see. So that logic is running every single frame, and it's just translating uh, that cube along that axis. So um, wiring visually up is quite simple. But of course, you can get into some pretty complex graphs as you start adding more and more detail. Now, to parallel exactly what we did in the other one, let's do our hello world as well. So you can left click a node here, and we hit X to delete, just like you do elsewhere in Blender. So now that we've done that, we can come here and go uh, add, and then we're going to use the uh, event this time, but instead we're going to say on init. So when our application is first created, and by the way, spoiler alert, this is a terrible demonstration, but it segues into something in a minute, because unfortunately that print functionality does not work great right now in 0 0.4. But I'm going to show you a workaround. So print, so this is the equivalent of trace. So we're basically just coming out here. And you notice we have this input to print. So it needs a value. It needs something to print. So we're going to create another node. So add node of type value. And then we're going to go uh, value, no, variable, sorry. And we'll create a string. Here I can say, hello world. And we can just drag and drop over. So there you go. And in theory, we could run this and have the system console open here, and it will print there. Unfortunately, unless this was just fixed in the most recent version, it still doesn't work. And that is problematic, and that's why I'm actually choosing to cover something that is currently broken. There's two excuses behind that. First off, you always have to keep in mind that Armory is a work in progress, and this kind of stuff is going to happen on occasion. So if you try and use something and you're finding it's not working, do do a quick search on the forums and you will probably find someone has already reported it or on GitHub it might already be reported as an issue. Um, but this one also I'm showing you because there is a workaround to it and being able to print out debug information on screen is pretty valuable, especially when you're just learning. So let me show you how you can get around that. And we're going to look at two ways. The first one is really simple, actually. So we'll start with it. Uh, we can head on back over here to the render tab. We can switch over here to the Armory player. Instead, go to Armory project, like so. And see this debug console? All you have to do is check that guy on. So click that. So debug console is now enabled. And when we run it, uh, there will be now a console of information overlaid on top of our application as you can see here, and there is the result of our trace. Also, if you drill down, they've got some information on the objects that are in your scene, including their positions, as well as uh, the amount of draw calls being done, the amount of time it's taking, the amount of time per frame. So you can see that we're updating it basically 60 frames per second at a constant rate. Oh, there you can see. So this is useful in general, just for having some additional information. But if you're having trouble getting trace to actually print to the system console, 
Um, you can trace it out directly to the debug console right here and save yourself a heck of a lot of time. But we're also gonna introduce one more concept in this video, and then we're gonna wind it down. And this is actually their UI layer. Now the cool thing is there's actually an entire 2D UI layer built over top of Armor. And we're gonna very, very quickly look at how it can also be used to spit out some information. So first things first, I'm gonna come back to here. I'm gonna turn that guy off so we're not completing for screen real estate. And then in order to create our UI camps, we're gonna go switch over here, switch to the scene guy right here. I haven't used this one yet, but switch to scene. Scroll on down and you will find another armory option here. We want to do another trait, so create a new trait, like so. And what we want to create is a UI, like so. These are basically the same thing as the properties we were dealt with, but these are being attached at the scene level instead of at the object level. Uh, so now that we've created a new UI, we can create a new canvas right here. I'm fine with the name My Canvas like so, and now we can edit the canvas. And this, as I said, is a basic kind of 2D UI layer built on top of Armory. So you can, you've got your various different controls here that can go on the canvas. So, oops, uh, we got text, images, buttons, up, down, and remove. We're just gonna create a text. So select text, we'll scroll this guy all the way across like there so it takes up the full room. And we will call this, uh, and look at my thing so we stay consistent. Okay, I called it text out. Text out, like so. And then when you're done, just click save. So this is how you can create simple 2D UIs that can overlay over top of your 3D game. And now that we're done, now that we save that, we click X to exit out. And now we can come on back here. And instead of doing a print call, we'll just get rid of this print call right here. And we'll add a new node of type canvas, set canvas text, and we'll just click there. We'll bring our text in like this. And this element is the name of the field to update as we called it text out earlier. And we'll go ahead and run this example. And now you will see, as long as I didn't screw anything up. Nothing. That might fall under the category of I screwed something up. One second. Okay, I'm not entirely certain what happened there, but I went back into Edit Canvas. Uh, this guy was not renamed, so I basically renamed it again and did my save. And uh, I, I don't actually know what just happened, but uh, we're good now. So when I head on back over here, we hit Play. And here you will see your scene and then your overlaid UI. Uh, so again, we will get into the UI layer with a whole lot more detail, but I do find it's uh, very useful to be able to get different kinds of information on screen very early. So that's why I cover such stuff early on. And hopefully the trace functionality gets uh, fixed soon enough. But truth of the matter is, the way that the console is implemented in Blender is kind of a pain. Uh, and once again, uh, my ongoing reminder that you never ever ever click that or it just blows everything away. Um, so using the debug console may not be a terrible idea as it is. Now if you did miss anything in this particular tutorial, don't worry, this tutorial here, the text-based version, does in fact cover everything we did exactly step by step. So. Um, you can use it as a reference to catch back up, et cetera. So hopefully that was useful to you. And that's about where we're gonna stop it. We're coming up on the 20 minute mark. I don't wanna get a lot more detail than that, but don't worry, again, we are going to get into a world more detail on both how to do hacks coding as well as how to do more node-based coding. And in fact, our next tutorial, we're going to get into handling input and we will be creating a node graph and a hack space version uh, showing how to do polled and event driven input in both environments. So uh, do stay tuned for that and you will learn and see a bit more of how coding works. But in the meantime, do be sure to try some of those bundled traits out, uh, open them up in the editor and you can often see uh, what's going on. And as you may have noticed from this video, first off again, Armory is under development. So expect some blemishes and glitches here and there. But if you do have problems, a lot of times maybe just save your scene, uh, reopen the editor, and you know, uh, an event that didn't fire before may fire for you that time. We saw a little bit of that in this demonstration. Uh, hopefully we don't have too much more of that going forward. All right, that's it for now. Hope you guys all found that useful. Please let me know what you thought in the comments down below. If you have any questions that I am not inevitably going to answer in new tutorials, so any questions about what I just covered, please do let me know down below. And if there are specific topics you want me to touch on, please also do let me know those as well. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.